All right, uh, this is a meeting of the Village of Suffern Planning Board, and I call this meeting to order at uh, 7.01 p.m. on Wednesday, May 18th, 2022. Uh, Mr. Yaffe, will you please do the roll call? Dan? Here. Tim? Here. Chairman? Here. Rob? Present. Andrew. Present. Hudson. Here. I'm here. Thank you. And now let's please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, so we've actually got a pretty full agenda tonight. We're going to start with uh, with the sign applications. Do we have anybody here from Luna Cakes Bakery? Please come up. Oh, good, we're going in order the way I call them now. And then uh, please state your name and address for the record, and then just uh, explain your your project and your signs. Well, my name is Raul Sanchez, and this is my uncle. My name is Ignacio Coit, and we are, we are open a bakery here in Southern. So I come for the permits. Right, and the what's, what's the address, and can you please speak in the microphone? Tori Lafayette. Uh, the sign, I think we keep the same, only change the name. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I sent it to you. Hold on. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you're replacing existing sign that was previously approved? Yes, we plan to replace it, keep the same concept, just change the name and the logo. So it's going to be the same piece of board, the same color, which was white. And we have a picture of our idea. Are you all ready for me to show it to you? If you like, I think everybody has it. Yeah, I think we are. Everybody has it. Oh, okay. Anybody so. have any comments? Yeah, I'd like to know if you would uh, object to putting your hours of operation on your door. Say the question again. I'd like to know if you would object to putting your hours of operation on your door. Because you state that you're going to be open from, I have it here somewhere. I'm not looking at it and I'm not finding it. I believe it was like yeah, seven, seven, seven to ten, ten yeah. seven days a week. Yeah, seven days. So if you would just put that on your door so that the public and everyone knows your hours of operation. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. And we open to eight in the morning to ten to ten and then nine. Eight to ten? Eight to ten. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. It's okay. Anybody opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And you need to go to the yeah. building, excuse me, you need to go to the building department to get the permit to hang the sign before you hang it, okay? So just go see Steve upstairs for that. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. We could go right now. No. no, there he's not in. Tomorrow he's in. Oh, okay. Okay? You're welcome. Uh, next up is, is it Yole or Yole Beauty? And again, please state your name and the address for the record, please. Hello, good, e hello. <laughs> good evening. How are you? Good, how are you? So our business is Yole Beauty Inc. And it's 80 Orange Avenue. Okay, just tell us about your, uh, your sign application. It's, a, it's, a it's the same, um, it's the same color. We use the same sign that was there from the previous owner. We're just changing the name to Yolay Beauty. Okay. Anybody else? 
Anybody have any comments? Yeah, I'm going to ask the same question of all of you that come up. Would you be okay putting the hours of operation on your door, and what are they? It is already there. <laughs> okay, I don't think it was on your application. I'm asking you when are you going to be open? Oh, yes, we, we do have it on the door. Um, we just, we use a temporary one and we're gonna, we're creating the, the new one, an official um, hours. Okay, could you let me know Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday oh, yes. from when to when? Yes. Tuesday, Tuesday so, through Saturday. And what is the time? Hold on. From 10.30 till 7. 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else care to comment? All, right. All in favor? All in motion. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> motion to approve. Motion. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Same thing. Same you, thing. You've got to go to the building department for a <coughs> before you change the sign. Thank Is you. that on the same floor as second floor? Second, second floor. Back in the corner. You, you just have to go get a permit to hang. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anybody here from Suffering Chiropractic? Yeah, here she comes. Oh. Um, did you see my note on that now that I gave you from Steve? Oh. Okay. This is the one that doesn't have to so it has okay. to be sent to you. All right, please name your, uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Tina Montemagni, practices suffering chiropractic, and it's Can one. you talk in? Yeah, the we can not hear you. Sorry, sorry. Um, uh, my name is Tina Montemagni, the office is suffering chiropractic, and the address is 1C Suffern Place. Okay. So just tell us about your sign. Uh, the, the box is already up, and so we're just putting the uh, office name and the doctor's name, and our hours will be posted on the door. We're just finalizing them. Okay. Figuring out what they are. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be Monday and Wednesdays, 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., and Tuesdays, Thursdays, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Great. Anybody have any questions or comments? No, she answered mine. Can I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. And I know to go upstairs. Yeah, tomorrow, you know, he's in tomorrow at 8. Yeah, because you need to get that is subject to. Oh, I'm, you know what? I apologize. It's okay. Um, yeah, you still need a certificate of use in fire safety. Yes. Uh, so it is subject to uh, to you getting those. Yes. From the village. We, we're aware. Yeah, I told Okay. You. Thank you, guys. Have Thank a great you. Day. All right, anyone from Key Metrics? Good evening, uh, Kevin Cramsey. We're at 20 East Park Place in Suffern. We're opening up uh, an accounting firm, um, and we'll post the hours on there. Nine to five, except it's tax season, then it'll be nine to whenever. <laughs> okay. uh, you're, you're not changing the existing footprint, I understand? No, not at all. Have the same box up for the sign, just replace the, the facing. Okay, Any uh, anybody with any comments? No, you stated your, your hours are nine to five, Monday through Friday? Yeah. Thank you, if you could put that on your door. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do I have a motion to approve the sign application? Make a motion. I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Than that too. And the motion carries. <laughs> Thank you and to get through good luck. Tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> Again, you need to go to the building department for the permit before you hang it. Okay. Thank you. What do you got to do? Really tired. Uh, we're going to jump. We have old business, um, so we have crime homes. Come up and state your name and address. Hello, my name is Danielle Russo DeVito, Prime Homes Property Group at 22 Chestnut. <clears throat> so the last time I was here, I had too many signs down, so what I changed was I took down, um, underneath the Prime Homes logo, I took down the residential where it was checkmarked, you know, with the bullets, and under Prime Commercial, I kept the property management one, but I took away the commercial um, with the bullet points. 
and I changed the size of the iFund and I made it all in one instead of a couple of different ones and that's 16 by 28 inches and I changed the door sign and I made it smaller 16 to 20 inches so all combined I did the calculations I'm not sure if you have it in front of you but I did the square footage and the percentages so if you take all of the glass and combine it together it's 19.26 percent and in each window is about the prime commercial one is 21 percent the prime homes window is 16.2 the iFund window, is, since it's very narrow, is 20%, and the door is 21%. Okay, yeah, from our uh, building inspector, we have, uh, looks like 18% and 21%. Anyone have, just overall, anyone have any comments? Yeah, what did Steve call it? Steve said 18% uh, for the windows, and it was 21% for the proposed sign on the door. Well, I'll be honest, I'm not happy with the door. It's it's more than twice what it should be. It's 21%. Didn't you just say the door is allowed to be 21% or 20%? Well, it's supposed to be 10. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to give you a hard time with the window because the window is huge. So 18 we can live with. But to tell you the truth, Danielle, you were told to make us a mock-up before you did all the changes and get it approved. You just disregarded that and did what you wanted to do. The mock-up, so the companies that I work with are all online. So I paid for the mock-ups and I understand that you guys weren't going to approve it, but I was going to take the loss in the money. But I can't, I have to see what it looks like, the size. I did the percentages, like for the iFund. I made sure that it was 20%. So I did like 16 by 28 when it was a lot larger than that. The same thing with the door. I thought I thought it was 37% before. I thought going down to 21 was going to be okay. I didn't realize that it was going to be a, an issue. Well, it's not up to me alone. We'll take a vote and see what people say. Anybody else have any comments? And you know, do you have the hours on the door? I know the so I, I used to have 10 to 6, but then, like, since I do real estate, I'm not actually there all the time, 10 to 6. So what I did was I put, I might be in a showing, please call me, and by appointment only. Is that okay? Because it's just, I don't want to say 10 to 6, and then the place is closed, and then people are like, wait, it's supposed to be open 10 to 6. Well, couldn't you put a sign on there, out showing? I do. I, that's what I did on the door sign. I said, I may be showing, here, hold on, I'll literally read it. If we aren't here, we are showing properties, please call to make an appointment, 845, you know, my phone number. Because there would be times where my assistant would be 30 minutes late, <laughs> and then people would be like, oh, I thought it was open at 10. So now I just put, if we're not here, we're showing properties just to call, and then you know, most of the time if they call, if I'm there in the area, I'll be like, I'll be there in five minutes. So what are you stating your hours are, regardless of whether you're out showing or not? So I try to be there between 10 and 6, but if someone needs to see a house, like I'll run out, go show a house, come back. So it's kind of like that. I don't have a full-time staff yet. Uh, All right, so. so you're saying basically 10 to 6. Yeah, that I try to be there, but sometimes I might be, like, I might leave in the middle of the day. So I put that on the door so that it doesn't look like I'm not operating and that I'm not, you know, I'm actually out actually doing real estate. I'm not just closed for no reason. And is that seven days a week? So um, Monday through Friday. And then sometimes I'll be there on a Saturday. But most of the weekends I'm showing houses. Okay, well, did you say you posted it on the, on the yes. door? Yes, there's a picture right here. I put it in red, too, so that it's, you know, bold, that it says, it says, if we aren't here, we're showing properties. Please call to make an appointment. So I've had people call, and then they, we make an appointment. So it hasn't been an issue. And I really don't expect a lot of walk-in traffic, but I do get actually a lot. I, when I got the space, I wasn't expecting walk-in. I was just doing it for an office. Because to have a brokerage, you need to have an office. Um, but I've actually got a lot of walk-in traffic and a lot of happy people, so. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? I have a motion to approve the sign application. 
Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the sign application with the with the. Um, I know that we're we're over the uh, the limit. So as far as making an exception on that limit, I, I'll make a motion for that. I, I think we've approved things slightly over the limit before. Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Good luck to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. All right, so next up, next up on the agenda, we have some public hearings scheduled. Um, so anybody here from Suffering Sales and Edwards Funeral Chapel? Who are you with? In Suffering Sales? Okay. Um, all right, so um, what we're going to do is we have to send, we're, we're, you're going to be heard tonight, but we've got to send your application to the county because you're on a state road. So we'll be, you know, we, we won't be voting on it to this this evening, but we're going to, you know, you'll be heard and then we'll send it to the county. They have 30 days and then, uh, you know, we'll come back. Now, the next scheduled meeting is in 29 days and we, we're going to discuss it right now. Uh, does anybody have an issue if we schedule our June meeting for the following week. So it should be on, I believe, June 16th. Does anybody have a problem if we schedule the following week? We'll see the 15th. 15th, the sorry, the 15th, yeah. You want the 22nd? 22nd, if that works. That would then give them the, the additional. That would then give them yeah, the Yeah, it would give you the additional time so that the county can do their thing and uh, we get it back and, and then we can. So it doesn't delay it another month. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't want you to go into our, to, uh, July. Yeah, but it's structural. So I don't have, I don't have a problem. Mr. McInerney? No, no problem. No, it's fine. Okay, so uh, you have a motion to uh, set the date for the June meeting to June twenty second, twenty twenty two. I'll make a motion for to set the meeting for June 22nd. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. All right, if you'd like to come up and uh, to present. Sorry, just please state your name and address for the record. Hi, I'm Alexandra. I'm Alexandra Abu with Offing Architects. This is Joe, he's the owner. The address is um, 160 Orange Avenue, Edwards Funeral Chapel. Please proceed. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're here today. Uh, he's doing renovations on the funeral home. Um, and it was, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry about that. He's doing renovations on the funeral home. Um, it already started. It was approved by the buildings department here, and he's making some changes to the facade. So we brought um, an updated updated rendering. I don't know if should I should I bring this up or? Yeah, I'm just. Hold it up so or you can see. Can you hold it? <laughs> I can hold it. Hold it over. Yeah, bring it, bring it up. Just hold it so everybody can see as you go by. Before and after. So it will all be um, lab side siding. Right. It's just right. different colors right. from the original mm -hmm. facade. Looks a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, it has been updated to what will actually look like. Any any questions or comments from anyone? Not at this time. I guess we'll wait for the county. Okay. So as I said, you know, we're not going to open a public hearing because we have to send it out to the county uh, for their you know approval and comments. So again, we'll have you back June twenty second. You know, we're going to actually push the meeting back a week so that we ha you, they have the full thirty days that they need, and uh, then we can open the public hearing and, and make a decision. <laughs> Great. Um, I have a question. We did update the rendering from what was approved. Do I send that to one of you guys? Should I go up to the building department? So uh, the county can have the latest rendering. I didn't hear what you said. I'm so yeah. sorry. Sorry. We updated the rendering to what it's actually going to look like from what was approved before. Do I send that to one of you guys, or do I go send up to send it to me so I can send it to, to the you. county? Okay. Can I get your email? So it's your way out in the planning board. Oh, okay. Right okay, at the perfect. village clerk's office. Okay. Thank you. So we'll see you again for next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, up next we are going to continue the public hearing for the, um, the IV2 Rockland Logistics LLC, which is a proposal on the Novartis property. Uh, we have with us uh, Bonnie Franson, who is the planner from Nelson Pope Borges, who um, has reviewed the project and, and has comments. So if you would like to approach the podium and make your presentation. Good evening, Chairman and Board Members. Uh, you should have all received uh, a review letter from our office. Uh, and in it, we addressed uh, several key areas. One is, just in general, the process, uh, the use, what's required as far as approvals. We like to give an overview. Uh, we addressed uh, permits, uh, local, state, county, from our understanding of what's been submitted, what's been stated, uh, as well as our own review. Uh, we then get into the site plan itself. Uh, this is somewhat, I mean, it's very, it's a very large site plan set, but there is information that is still somewhat general in nature, um, which I think can be further uh, updated. And then lastly, we uh, address the environmental review process. And so um, I think I'm going to really focus upon a few items rather than take up a lot of time. And I think if you have questions, um, you can certainly um, ask me and I can clarify them. But uh, as we all know, this is uh, a project that's proposed within the PLI, Plan Light Industrial District. Uh, it is a use that is permitted by right. Uh, and as such, uh, it's subject to site plan approval from the planning board, and you are in the process of holding a public hearing. Um, that's, it's required unless waived, but you decided to hold it. Um, in terms of seeker, the most important aspect of this is to understand that the project is a type one action. And so under the New York State Environmental Quality Review regulations, uh, proposed projects are classified in accordance with the three types of actions. One is type two actions, which are exempt from seeker. They're minor, they don't require any environmental review. You have the type one actions, which are considered large projects, and they're more likely to have a significant adverse impact and would require preparation of an environmental impact statement. And then you have all the projects that are in between, which are called unlisted actions. So in this instance, and perhaps you've already gone um, over this uh, since I'm kind of coming in a little late into the process. This is a type one action, which is more likely to have a significant adverse impact. And there appear to be uh, three thresholds that the project meets. One is that the project involves physical alteration of uh, 10 acres or more. So obviously it's um, proposing alterations to more than that. Parking for 500 vehicles in a city, town, or village having a population of 150,000 persons or less. So we do have more than that in terms of the number of parking spaces on the site. And then in a village having a population of 150 persons or less, a facility with more than 100,000 square feet of gross floor area. So as you can see, the threshold for a type one action is 100,000. This is 10 times more than that. This is, this is over a million square feet of space. So again, this is a type one action, so you really need to look at um, the, the environmental, the potential environmental impacts uh, of the project, uh, and especially scope out those that are relevant to this project. Um, this environmental impact <coughs> statement isn't intended to address subject matter that isn't necessary because it's not relevant to that particular type of project. Um, the application is subject to GML review, and you did uh, receive the GML review letter from the county, which had, I think, around 26 or so proposed modifications. Um, so just as a general comment, uh, it'd be really useful if the applicant provides response uh, letters back to you uh, whenever you receive a uh, letter or a memo from various agencies, uh, it'd be useful to get their response back as to how they're going to address it or whether they believe it's relevant, et cetera, just for the record. Um, we get into approvals and permits. Um, 
And there are a few that I'm not sure have been addressed, and I'll defer ultimately to the village attorney uh, with regard to things like soil permits, uh, tree, uh, tree removal. There are other local permits that might be triggered by this particular application, and I think you need to just look at those that we've identified in the memo. Uh, again, one, flood damage prevention. I know there was some correspondence, I believe, from the building inspector that said that this was not in a uh, uh, flood, special flood hazard area. However, in looking in detail at some of the site plans, it does look like the grading is encroaching within uh, the floodplain, the 100-year floodplain. Whether that triggers a permit or review, that's his determination, but I just want to make sure that he looks at the particular plans to, to determine whether a permit, in fact, is needed. Uh, chapter 158, Transportation of Hazardous Materials. Your uh, chapter or your code has, and, and vehicles and traffic, you have certain regulations that apply to vehicles and to the transport, transport of materials in the village. And so that I would just ask that the applicant look at or that the village look at whether or not they are allowed to maneuver and travel through the village based on their proposed operations because it has to be done in, in uh, accordance with those particular sections of the code. Uh, you do have noise regulations, both a separate noise chapter as well as um, performance standards in the zoning. So they do need to demonstrate to you that they won't have um, any significant noise impact. Uh, the concern is really to the south end of the property. Uh, obviously to the north you have the New York State Thruway. Uh, the Thruway is a bit elevated. I don't know what to what extent noise would emanate, emanate to the north, but to the south, uh, the two smaller warehouse facilities are in relative close proximity to uh, Esther Gitlow Towers, um, the monastery, and even though it's across 59, the hospital. And those buildings are elevated above um, the warehouse. And so a warehouse with this number of tractor trailer vehicles doing maneuvers, back Backing up, backup beepers, et cetera, um, HVAC equipment, that just needs to be considered in terms of how to, if necessary, mitigate it. But to begin with, there needs to be some kind of evaluation of what the magnitude would be to begin with. Um, soil removal, there is a permit that's required, um, I believe, from the Board of Trustees for any. Uh, uh, removal of soil. I don't know what the cut and fill situation is with the proposed project, if anything's being removed, carried away, or imported, uh, but I think you need to know that to determine whether or not any kind of permit's required. You have your own stormwater management uh, regulations. Uh, you have a stormwater management officer who accepts the SWIPs, uh, even though a, a, a speedy's permit for stormwater is still required from the New York State DEC. So one of the items that I don't believe has been submitted is a stormwater pollution prevention plan, a drainage plan, which needs to be detailed to meet both New York State DEC requirements as well as your own uh, code. So overall, I think it'd be beneficial to have a narrative of the proposed project. I think that there's an application which has some information. There's also an environmental assessment form that has some information, but generally, especially when you get to the point of making a decision and ultimately establishing conditions, you want to know what it's based on, and it'd be useful to have a narrative that says hours of operation, anticipated number of employees, is that, are the activities occurring within shifts, uh, when is, is truck trips um, anticipated, in general materials and goods that would be stored in the warehouses, uh, is there storage indoors or outside? Uh, I didn't see building floor plans or uh, uh, elevations. Uh, proposed phasing of the development, there are three buildings here. And so if they're leased separately, is there a sequence of construction that has to occur, such as the main driveway, et cetera, that has to be built prior to other buildings um, being constructed? So I think in general, a good sense of phasing would be very useful useful. Um, and then other data that you as a board and the village deem appropriate. 
Uh, there's various consultations that have to be made. Uh, one of the comments we raised was what's the phasing of demolition? Uh, some of the narrative, the phasing plan from my perspective is generic. Uh, there's a lot of material that has to be removed. What is that material? Are there any special measures that have to be taken in terms of fugitive dust control, et cetera, in removing uh, the buildings? And then what does that mean from a traffic perspective, a noise perspective when this occurs? Um, we talked about phasing. Is there a potential for a future subdivision? There are three separate buildings, but does the applicant in the future intend to possibly sell off buildings to various uh, other owners? And if so, you would have to then review a subdivision plan and you have to make sure that the yard requirements, et cetera, would be met on an individual parcel basis. So we're just anticipating the potential in the future that will this be all on leased land that the uh, owner continues to control or the, is it possible that it will be sold off into pieces on separate lots and what does that mean from a zoning perspective? Um, site plan comments, I think highlights, it'd be really useful to have an existing condition sheet. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything on the plans that show just the site itself as it exists today with the environmental features, the wetland delineation, the floodway, uh, and the floodplain, the tree line, just to know what is there so that as we look at then the built condition, we know what's changing. So typically there are existing conditions uh, sheets as part of a set uh, and we think it'd be useful to include that with this set as well. Um, we do mention one of the items is there's some things missing as far as the site plan specifications. In terms of readability, there are digital versions of the maps, but we kind of go through from this one scale that is the overall site, and because it's so large, it's a little difficult to read. But then we get down to the 30 scale um, sheets, and as a result, it segments what you're looking at. So if I'm checking parking, I see it on three different maps for, let's say, a, a particular warehouse. So it might be useful just for the applicant to so in, in some way show the three warehouses separately overall um, because I think it would help in the review of the process and other agencies understanding the proposal. Um, I think it'd be also important um, your requirements, your, your site plan requirements specify that existing structures are to be shown within 200 feet of the so site lot lines. Uh, what they have submitted is an aerial photograph that shows a radius of 200 feet around uh, the site, but it's an existing aerial, and what you don't see are the proposed improvements related to buildings that are within 200 feet. And the reason I suggest it should at least be on the site plan, you should show those building footprints, is we'd like to know what is the distance and what is being removed or graded within proximity to Esther Gitlow, the monastery, the library, et cetera. So I think they should show on the site plan the building footprints, the planometric of what's within 200 feet of the site as required by uh, the site plan specifications. Again, just various comments. I won't get into the specifics in terms of the site plan. I think it's going to continue to evolve as you go through the process. Um, in terms of CICRA, uh, number one, the part one EAF was incomplete. Uh, there was a lot of to be determined uh, responses in it, which honestly didn't have to be to be determined, information on soils, slopes, et cetera. So we reviewed the EAF um, and indicated where additional information should be provided because it's part of your seeker record and it should be much more complete and not have to be determines in them. Uh, in terms of evaluations, we did note noise. There should be um, some noise analysis and consideration of both the stationary and the mobile noise sources. This is a very large facility, uh, again, or three facilities cumulatively over a million square feet. Um, air quality, there should be some uh, check to make sure that there isn't any mobile source emission issue. I don't think that there is, but it should be part of the record. Uh, there's reference to G 
geotechnical reports and soil reports that are in the site plan and if they have been prepared it'd be useful to get a copy especially geotech I don't know if there's any areas on the site uh, which may have some limited rock and so if there's rock removal can it be done by um, ripping it is it rippable or do they anticipate any kind of blasting or there should be some note I may have missed it but there should be a note that says no blasting if it's not necessary um, tree removal there is supposed to be a tree inventory uh, which I did not see uh, there should be a wetlands report uh, the maps show a wetland delineation but uh, for this size of a facility usually you have a wetland report which includes the wetland data sheets it's the type of information that would get submitted to the Army Corps the New York State DEC so there should be a more robust analysis of the, the wetlands what is the amount of wetland acreage being disturbed um, the applicant did say an individual permit is needed so we're suspecting that it's mo it's more than less but I think we need that uh, quantification environmental site assessment uh, it typically for these types of projects we get an environmental site assessment meaning is there any hazardous waste present was there any environmental hazardous waste any remains from the previous manufacturing operations um, only to ensure that it gets cleaned up um, before it's reused for for warehouses uh, we have various transportation comments, a um, couple of intersections that we thought should be added. We do have a traffic engineer that will look at this in more detail, but these were just preliminary um, uh, comments with regard to information, was it put together and or can it be put together. Stormwater, I did mention that we do need the stormwater pollution prevention plan. And then historic and archaeological resources. The EAF did indicate that this isn't an archaeologically sensitive area. When you prepare a stormwater pollution prevention plan, DEC requires consultation with um, the State Historic Preservation Office. Uh, I did note that it looks like there was some consultation. I didn't see any letter whether or not it was closed, whether there were any concerns, uh, but that should be supplied um, to the planning board as part of the CEQA record. So that is a quick summary, not so quick maybe, but a, a summary of my, uh, my memorandum. And if you have any comments, um, please feel free to ask me. I think in terms of process, I believe that the 30 days has um, already lapsed in terms of your uh, seeker request to be lead agency. So I think you can be lead agency, declare yourselves this evening. And then ultimately, you need to have sufficient information to do a determination of significance. I think that would be one of the important steps, which is, is this likely to have a significant adverse impact? You would issue a positive declaration, and the applicant has to prepare an environmental impact statement. Or is there additional information that you want submitted um, before you render that determination or that decision um, one way or the other? So um, one thing that would be good to accomplish would be to look at the part two, the long environmental assessment form or full environmental assessment form part two. It has a series of questions and it asks whether or not the project would have impacts and you identify whether they're small or whether they're moderate to large. The more moderate to large uh, check boxes uh, that you check, uh, the more likely it goes in a, you know, a different direction, an EIS direction as opposed to fewer. So that's part of the process. Um, I haven't been involved with the village for some time. I don't know what the usual process is that you follow for these types of projects, but that's certainly um, one route to determining, again, uh, significance. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I just, uh, Bonnie, thank you. The, uh, excellent. The, um, and we, had discuss, we haven't discussed this aspect, but we discussed the project before. Uh, the uh, letter from the village of Montebello, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you wanted to comment on that. My, you know, feeling is, um, you know, they, uh, 
they're not trying to claim lead agency, obviously. No, but, um, I, I don't believe that wasn't my reading of it. No, no, they mentioned they they felt they were an involved agency, which I don't necessarily think they're involved either, unless it comes into something to do with the traffic light or something. But um, right, so I just if you want to comment on it, sure. So um, from my perspective, with the village of Montebello, uh, they would have to have some discretionary approval to be an involved agency and so they have to deter, you know uh, document to your satisfaction and uh, I defer to the attorney whether in fact they have some kind of discretionary approval uh, I believe the old mill road is within the village and merely traveling over it doesn't necessarily necessitate a discretionary approval I think they need to again document specifically um, what might trigger that and then they become an involved agency which means that as you go through the secret process you coordinate with them um, but I'm sure as neighbors you do that you know regardless right I, I think that's the intention I just in terms of the yeah. uh, the, the definition of involved in secret yeah. is a little more than is, is different I should say than right. what somebody thinks you know in Involved means they're obviously involved. It's it, the village of Montebello has right. a, an interest in this, and we'll certainly hear from them. But uh, in terms of secret, the right. technicalities of secret. Yeah, secret is, is very specific. Yeah, I agree um, that we'll go ahead and, and probably my recommendation would be to declare a lead agency tonight based yes. on what's taken place so far. But I know the applicant is intending on addressing your comments and perhaps village of Montebello's as well. Sure. So we might put that over uh, to give them that opportunity and make whatever changes to the right. um, the EAF um, Need you know, to be before done. we do anything. Right. For and um, I would just say in terms of Montebello's submission, I wrote my memo and then I looked back at it. Uh, they did include the uh, traffic comments. And I think in particular that's what's relevant. Um, I included in my traffic comments, uh, we tend to think about warehouse trucks. And so we envision that all these trucks are going to go, you know, out to Route 59, Hemian, uh, and go toward the throughway. Uh, but we also have to think about the additional employees that are generated, which may come through the Montebello Road, Hemian Road intersection, which I don't know was evaluated. And there are realities about the capacity of the left turning movement at certain times of the day from Route 59 to Airmont Road to get to the throughway. And another issue we raised was in doing their analyses between 4.30, 6.30, that time period, is it possible <coughs> that they almost missed a little bit of a, uh, a peak, which may occur closer to 3.30? Uh, you all may know, we, or you may not know, our offices are off of 59. And so we travel this road frequently, and we seem to witness an, a, a bump up in traffic around 3.30. 30. And with all the different large uh, heat, uh, large uh, institutions in the area between the schools, the hospital, uh, you know, there just may be something that is creating a little, again, bump up around that time period. And, and we wondered whether or not there had been some counts done to verify the peaks um, specifically. So we may have missed it, but I think it's useful just to understand that because we do have some dynamics that are unique to that particular intersection and this area in terms of traffic, again, with the schools, the hospital, et cetera. So traffic will be important. DOT is going to be involved. There are improvements proposed to the, some several intersections, two intersections at least, which require DOT's involvement. And I think that needs to be understood because those mitigations have to happen to be able to accommodate the traffic. So, and are there alternatives? You know, I think that's another question. Is there an alternative to having to use Aramont? Uh, and, and I don't know the answer to that question. I, I think something to explore. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and uh, so to have the applicant step up and if there's anything you'd like to address or, or comment on what we just heard uh last at the last meeting in april you did mention that you had engaged the services of an acoustical engineer as well so i'd, I'd like to hear an update on uh, where we stand on that me and darius chef is from paris speech uh, attorney for the applicant have here uh 
the applicant here, Justin Drivedale, Lisa Lang, and also Dynamic Engineering that can get into some of the technicalities. Thank you for your letter. We received it today. We don't have a point-by-point -point response, and we don't want to waste everyone's time. Our plan, though, is to respond to all letters that we get from all, all um, agencies and also from Nelson Pope in writing, and also, uh, you know, meet with you if you have time to go over them with our people. It would be great. Um, whenever you're available, if the planning board is, is so inclined to allow that. Um, so, uh, Josh, do you want to turn up if we can, is there any acoustical uh, issues that we can talk about tonight, or do you want to wait and do that in the letter? Yeah, if we can do that okay. in the letter, that would be great. Not a problem. And also, I assume you'll address Montebello's uh, comments as well. Yeah, yeah, we met, actually met with them today, uh, had a good meeting with them, but yes, we will address every agency, Montebello, we got a number from the, uh, uh, the 239M referral letter, the, uh, the drainage agency, highway department, all of them we will address in writing, and to the extent we need to, we'll, we'll go through them step by step here at, at another meeting. We're trying to get everything at once, and then we can respond. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody from the public uh, would like to come up and make any comments? I know there's a lot of interest out there. Don't be shy. Please come up and state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rich D'Andrea from Collier's Engineering and Design. Uh, we were actually, our firm was retained by the village of Montebello. We submitted the letter along with their letter to your board, uh, and we reviewed the traffic impact study specifically uh, for the village. And the village asked me to come tonight just to um, just to highlight some of our overarching concerns about the project. And and I think from the village's perspective, you know, I think overall, I don't think there's any desire to stop the project, they just want to make sure that there's a hard look taken at, the, at this project. So considering that there is a lot of traffic that will be generated and it'll, a lot of it will go through the village of Montebello as well as all the other areas through, around here. So um, if I can just take a couple minutes, I'm just not going to go through everything in my letter because there's some technical stuff. I'm just going to highlight some of the, the, the bigger items and, and some of them that your planner actually already kind of addressed. So. Um, you know, one of the things that we looked at were was the distributions of traffic and, and where traffic is going to go to and come from. And, and based on that, we identified a couple other intersections that we felt should be analyzed in the traffic study. Um, spe specifically, uh, Debon Avenue at Airmont Road, and then Montebello at Airmont, and Montebello at Hemian. We think a lot of the traffic we're going to go through those intersections and should be should be looked at. Could, could you, I'm sorry. Could you just repeat those three guys? Yeah, they're listed in our in our letter. But right, yeah, right. Debon Avenue at, at Airmont, right. uh, Montebello Road at Airmont, and and Montebello Road at Hemian Road. The other thing that we were also concerned about is the, there's no mention of the, the schools that are off at on Hemian Road and, and on Montebello Road and that how this additional traffic might affect the operations that go on up there. So th those we, we thought should be looked at. Um, the one thing, the other, as we were going through this, and, and we also had the opportunity to view the video from the last meeting, um, there's some conflicting information in the traffic study versus what was st said at the last meeting about what the access scenario actually is. So I think that needs to be clarified. Where trucks are going to come in, whether it's the southern access, the north, the o o up at Odenmold Road, a combination of both. I think we just need to see that clarified. Um, in their analysis, they accounted for several other projects that are proposed in the area, the three of them specifically, but in our letter we listed another six or seven that we think should be considered that are in various stages of development um, or, or approvals or, or in, in construction at the moment. So we think that those should be also be considered in the, ana in the analysis part of the background traffic. Um, the project traffic generation that's identified in the study is based on ITE, Institute of Transportation Engineers, warehouse rates. The one thing that the traffic study does make mention of is that this is an industrial park. And ITE identifies different rates for a warehouse versus an industrial park. I don't specifically know if there's identified tenants for this yet, but typically what the New York State, our experience is that the New York State Department of Transportation, when there's no tenants identified, they typically like to see you look at the industrial park rates, which are sometimes two and a half times higher than the warehouse rates, so uh, as far as the traffic generation there. So you could have different impacts based on what the actual tenants are at the end of the day. Um, 
The other, one of the other things, I, I mentioned the, the distributions of traffic, where people are coming from. Uh, the traffic study identifies just 10% of passenger car traffic coming from the throughway, which to me seems a little low. So I, I think that's something that we, either justification for from the applicant or, or maybe a different d distribution needs to be uh, looked at. And part of our, our reasoning for having those other intersections up on Mount on Montebello Road analyzed is they show 45% of the traffic coming from the north on Hemian Road. But there's no analysis of those intersections up to the north. So that's where that uh, came from. Um, I think your planner mentioned uh, that getting input from DOT is going to be important. I believe that Old Mill Road currently is also uh, under this jurisdiction the Thruway Authority. So we, we think that that, that um, that input from them is going to be necessary for this. Um, and then it was also mentioned about 59 and Airmont Road, that intersection there. It's a critical intersection for this project. Uh, and the left turn from eastbound 59 onto Airmont Road, as it is today, I, I would say probably warrants a double left turn lane. Um, so adding additional traffic to it is a concern. And, and right now their plan is to mitigate that with traffic signal timing changes. And is that a feasible improvement? Can, can that be accomplished? Does that it really address the, the overall concern there? Is something that needs to be weighed in on by DOT. And then lastly, we in our letter, we had just asked is, you know, is there any other alternate access scenarios that could be looked at? Is there a way to get direct access out to 59 um, from the property or maybe through the quarry property next door that just as an overall access management plan could to distribute the traffic a little bit better and maybe uh, if there is some develop future development up at the quarry or something, there's a way to connect the two projects so that you have a, an access management scenario that makes sense. So uh, again, there's more detailed comments in our letter, but th those were just kind of the, the overarching things that we wanted to, to point out. So. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, could you state your name again because I didn't get it. Yeah, Rich Dandrea, D-A-N-D-R-E-A. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone with any comments? No, I'll wait till the applicants respond. Okay. And, and uh, would you like to respond to any of that at this point or just defer? I'm sorry? We'll respond to Yep, absolutely. Okay. Once we submit that, we'll be happy to talk about the number. Issues. Sounds sounds perfect. Yeah, Eddie, I think we just got that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? I mean, this is a big project. Our intent is to keep the public hearing open um, for a considerable amount of time until we've gathered all the information. So it's not a speak now or forever hold your peace type of situation. Okay. I could have a motion to declare the Village of Suffern Planning Board the lead agency under secret. Motion. Second. A second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. A motion to continue the hearing. And uh, we could have a motion to continue the public hearing at the June meeting. To the to uh, June June twenty second. I'm sorry, the June twenty second meeting. I'll make a, I'll make the motion. And do I have a second? I second it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. The motion carries. At seven p.m. Uh, sorry, at seven p.m. Yep. And by the way, one of the reasons we change it, obviously, we have a couple of uh, applicants that we've got to send their applications to the county, but it's also to allow uh, the village of Montebello. They generally hold their uh, village board meetings on the third Wednesday of every month, so we're changing it. We're pushing it back a week to try to accommodate them as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't think we have anything else. Anybody else have anybody else they'd like to discuss? Anything else? A motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make motion. a motion. A second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.